Hey, today I want to talk about the arrow operator in C and C++. Welcome back everybody. Today I wanted to add a quick video to our beginner playlist about a topic that I've seen confuse a lot of beginning C and C++ programmers, so I thought we should talk about it. And that is the arrow operator. Today's video is brought to you by all of those wonderful people who support this channel on Patreon. Also, Patreon is the place where you can find source code to all of my videos and get access to my monthly virtual office hours. But now back to those beginning programmers that are getting all confused about the arrow operator because they're just getting started. They're just getting their feet wet. They're having their first experiences with structured data types, things that have members, and then they realize that there's two different ways to get members. There's the dot operator and the arrow operator. And sometimes it's kind of confusing. There's two ways, which, how do I know which one to use when? Because they both seem the same, only different. So I thought today I would take a moment to show you. So let's jump into the code. Okay, just to change things up a bit, I'm going to do this example in C++. Don't worry, if you're in C, it's basically exactly the same, except C++ has classes and C doesn't. And in C, you'll need to put the struct keyword in places where you don't have to in C++. Now, there are a few other differences, but for the purpose of the arrow operator, things are gonna be pretty much exactly the same. So let's start out with this empty program. And for this demonstration, let's just create a struct really quick. And we're going to call it person. And let's say it represents a person. And let's just give it an age. It's going to be an integer. And we're in C++, so let's use strings. We're just going to say we've got a string called name. OK, now let's jump down in main. And we can create two people, let's say P1 and P2. OK, so I can instantiate multiple structs, make multiple objects with these of these persons. Each of these is going to have an age and a name. And we can access those members like this by saying like p.age equals 99 or p1.name equals Jacob, something like that. And then just, just so we can test and make sure we can see how things are going, let's uh, print these things out and say p1.name. p1.age years old. Okay, and we forgot our standards here. STD. Okay, okay, now this should work. Also, I do have a very simple make file, nothing fancy here. Just if you haven't ever seen make files before, check out some of my make videos, they will make it clearer. So back in here, now we can just run make and we can run example and you can see, okay, Jacob is 99 years old. Okay, so this is really simple. We use the dot operator. The dot operator is something that's used in a lot of other languages. Pretty much all of the object-oriented languages I'm thinking of right at the top of my head use the dot operator. And so this is pretty standard. Basically, all we're saying is that I want P1's age and I want P1's name. So I'm specifying the member of P1. But things get a little more complicated if I have a pointer. So let's come up here and let's say that I have a person pointer. We're gonna call this PPTR, and just for simplicity, let's assign it to be the address of P1, okay? We could, and more often, we would actually use the new operator to allocate some space on the heap, but the point is it's a pointer, which is just an address, so this will work just as well for our purposes today. Now, let's say that I'm, I've got this pointer and I want a member of the struct or class that a pointer is pointing to. Well, what do I do? Well, I could say, I could dereference PPTR and then use the dot operator to get the age, right? And say, like, I could update it like that. And if I compile this, you can see this does work. This allows me to dereference it. So, what this is doing is saying, get whatever PPTR points to that struct, dereference that. So, dereference the pointer, get the struct, and then we use the dot operator to get its age. And this will work, but it's kind of ugly. And I think it's kind of cumbersome, right? You Because you have these extra parentheses, you know, you still have the dot. So you basically have four extra characters to do this thing that we want to do. And since we work a lot with pointers and we don't want to have to do this over and over again because it makes the code harder to read and follow. So that's where the arrow operator comes in is basically we have a little bit of syntactic sugar that C++ gives us and C. Now, when I say syntactic sugar, what I mean is that we could live without it. Obviously, we do have a way we can do this, but it gives us a nicer, cleaner way of doing things. And so instead, we can just say pptr arrow age equals 56. At least I think that looks nicer. So yeah, the arrow operator just dereferences the pointer first, 
and then grabs the member of the struct or the class. This works. If this were a class, it would work exactly the same way. And so this is the basics of what the arrow operator is. And if you're still confused about which one to use, you just need to look at the type, whatever the thing is that you're trying to get the member of. If it is a variable that is a struct or class like this, like P1 and P2, they're structs. So in that case, you would use the dot operator. On the other hand, if it's a pointer to a struct or a class, then you're going to use the arrow operator. Or of course, if you really like asterisks and parentheses, then you can do it the ugly way right here. That's totally up to you. I'm not gonna judge, both ways will work. But either way, I hope this is helpful to the beginners out there. Like this video if it was helpful, subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss next week's video. And until then, I will see you later.